Welcome to Tie Cats this week, the tale of two seasons, and hopefully for the Tiger Cats, this is the momentum and the winning streak that they are able to continue after the two losses, two terrific wins. I'm RJ Bryden along with Luke Castor. We're all set, excited to call the game on Friday, the rematch of Labor Day that the Tiger Cats really dominated, except maybe late. We'll talk a little bit about that, but Luke, all around that Labor Day game, uh, another great effort from the Tiger Cats, continue to be a totally different team than they were in the first two games. It was fantastic. A great, great football day in Hamilton. And uh, you said it, it's, it was all around. They kind of found different places to get wins in the kicking game, the return game, offense and defense. There was uh, things, things were moving in the right direction in a lot of ways. And early on in the first two games, that's not what it looked like. There was any time there was a small win that could have gone either way, it was not going uh, the way that the Tie Cats uh, would have hoped. And uh, on Monday, things 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 clicked a little bit. It was uh, it was great to see. This defense is is starting to be something that's really really fun to watch, and it's going to give other teams' offense a lot of problems. You you do the math from the first two games to these last two games, and it's significant. There's ten points fewer allowed on average, and that's not always the defense. Sometimes they're in top field position, but 10 points fewer, which is terrific. They've allowed almost 100 yards fewer on average over these last two games than they did in the first two. They had the top three players in pass knockdowns with Jamal Roll, Frankie Williams, and Siante Evans, who won't play. We'll get into that uh, a little more in depth in a moment. But just this defense, Luke, it, it's been rock solid on, on every aspect, the secondary, the linebackers, and the line. Absolutely. I, I, that, that was the biggest takeaway from the game in the Coach O show this week. I, I mentioned it to, to Orlando Steinhauer as well. It, it's the front four, and Labor Day was the first game that they had the, the four guys who you would probably say, you know, at the beginning of the season, this was the four guys, right? Uh, there, there had been mix up, mix arounds and injuries and whatnot, and they had their four guys in there. But even past the, the starting four, they've got guys – They've got depth at that at that position as well, and their run game defense has been really, really outstanding. And in the again, and the tale of two seasons in the first game of the season against Winnipeg, uh, five yards was was uh, almost a given by the end of that game. Uh, on, on any run, uh, there has been no luck. Montreal, Toronto, trying to run the ball against the Tie Cats, it has been very, very impressive. Jamal Roll. Frankie Williams, um, Carol Brooks got the, got a, a very very impressive interception in the game. Uh, I, I think that they have an absolutely outstanding secondary right now. Um, I, I I think it seems to me if you're prepping as an offense about to play Hamilton, I just don't exactly know what you're. You can prep against the coverages, you know, you can schematically try to try to say okay hey they're going to play cover four a lot and, and this is what works against cover four but you still got to make run the route and make the throw it's not going to be easy yeah well that secondary I want to talk about it a bit Luke because Siante Evans won't play Channing Stribling comes in he played in the first two games and was good he had uh, knockdowns he had five tackles yeah. so you know the Siante Evans is the guy they want in there but they still have a pretty good guy in Channing Stribling but on that other side of the secondary, the way Jamal Roll has been playing, and you mentioned Kariel Brooks in that interception, wouldn't you think that the Argos will probably try to test Stribling a little bit in this game? Yeah, I could see that. And uh, the truth of it, I don't know. I think every offensive coordinator is different. And I don't know that a coach is going to change strategy of play calling for that kind of thing. I do think they'll maybe he ha they have a short list of plays and say as the game goes on we need to run these at some point here. But the Toronto offense is going to be the Toronto offense of last week, I think. And and the truth is, all twelve guys get tested at some time during the game. You know, it, it's gonna it, it's gonna happen and it's gonna happen naturally. Coach O said uh, in the coach uh, in the Coach O show. Yes, Bethel Thompson played very well in the fourth quarter, and we'll see what happens uh, and and who takes the field for them. But the Toronto offense, they're they're not going to change their offense because of that, right? They're going to be running the same plays that they had run. It's not uh, – if you look at the flip side of that, in the weeks where we had lost a game, uh, 
uh, and, and nothing was really clicking the way that it kind of seemed like for Toronto, you don't throw out the playbook after that week. You can't. I mean, you have confidence in it. And, and when you break down the film uh, from a coach's and a player's perspective, it was small things that made the game go wrong for you. It really was. And it's easy to see that when you're, when you're the player uh, and when you're, when you're prepping like that. Um, you, you run your offense, you make the slight adjustments, but it's still the Hamilton defense, one change here or there. It's tough, tough, tough to prep for this team. And it was a pretty close game until Frankie Williams got that punt return touchdown that really put the momentum for the Tiger Cats. And he's yeah. been wonderful and in special teams. He was even asked this week with his with his good hands if he will play any offense. And he just kind of laughed and, and said that oh, we got pretty good offensive guys, but if he's called upon, he, he'd be happy to do it. So that would be something to see yeah. him play all three aspects. I, I don't think <laughs> we're going to see that on Friday. But yeah. what we won't also see, Luke, is Brandon Banks, which is a, a big blow for the Tiger Cats. Uh, he got banged up, hit really hard. I thought he had the touchdown. And Thank goodness for you right there beside me. You were able to spot that. Uh, but, uh, unfortunately, he took a big hit. Won't play. So how significant is that for the Tiger Cats? Yeah, uh, not easy to have uh, your best athlete not in the game. Um, early in the season, we saw a different receiver lineup as well, right? There, there, there's, there still are injuries that have, uh, you know, Braylon Addison, uh, uh, most notably, they're still not uh, really operating with the lineup that was intended to be the 2021 lineup uh, at receiver. Tommy Condell is very much so a next man up uh, guy. I mean, you have to be ready to prepare. We saw a couple young receivers make great plays in the game uh, on Labor Day. Um, it, it just takes a couple, couple more guys doing that. And I will say that Dane has done a good job of spreading the ball around. You know, uh, uh, Speedy is not the only the only tool uh, in the toolbox. You know, for Dane right now, costly for sure. I'm not sure. I, I do think that this team can 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 oh, can counter for that. Can correct for a guy missing, even though it is uh, such an impactful player like Speedy. Dane Evans, best quarterback efficiency in the CFL through his first two games. So that that's terrific. Uh, Jalen Acklin, he was the first couple of games. And then Stephen Dunbar Jr. was the star against Montreal. And then Tim White, the star against Toronto. So yeah. you're right, they're able to, to spread it around. How much of that, though, Luke, would be that Speedy B is getting most of the attention or, or the double teams and opening up these other receivers? I think you're right. Um, and I think it was obvious that that uh, Tommy was was – uh, getting the ball to Speedy in some creative ways last week. They had they had a, an incredible number of uh, end around sort of handoffs to wide receivers waggling uh, in front of Dane's uh, uh, stance in the shotgun. Um, I do think that any defense has to has to keep has to ask themselves where is Speedy B right now. Um, I think the truth of that is though, sometimes it's it's not you know he's out there every play and they're they're still going to run their defense, their CFL defense. Sometimes it's that if he is in some place that he shouldn't be, someplace special, things can change in that in that instance. But a team is prepping to run their defense and knows where he's going to be at that usual slot position. Um, you, you can't overcorrect. You can't go too uh, aggressive with overcorrecting into one player. Uh, there's there's a bunch of professional men out there, and they can all they can all score a touchdown, uh, you know, at, at any time. I think that um, I, I I do think I what I'm expecting to see is an increased amount of spreading that ball around. I love to see David Unger get a few passes on the way outside of the field because it is lonely out there sometimes. And, and so, you know, there's games that go by and it's like, oh my goodness, like, you know, you're just clear, you're running clear, clearing out go routes and you're doing your job and you're blocking on runs, but the ball just never makes it out that far. And when an offense can recognize that and do that, especially early on in a game, it widens everything out. You know, it takes, it takes a little bit of the, uh, it takes a little bit of the weight off of that box and off of those slot players on the inside. And filling in for Brandon Banks will be Poppy White. He played against Saskatchewan, had a catch for 18 yards, had a rush for 12 yards. So it seems all these uh, receivers are getting rush yards too, just trying to change things up and give different looks. A yeah. big topic coming into this, and I know you talked about it with Andy Fandews on the, the Task and Two show on the Ticats Audio Network. 
what's the turnaround? Like three days off in between, not really off, really one day off, and then practice, walk through, and you, you have the game again. A lot of the Tiger Cats players were talking about it, and some, most have never experienced a tight turnaround like that. Uh, what's your experience with that? And do you see any uh, advantage either way? I guess both teams have to go through it. So I remember in, when I came up halfway, to, halfway through two, 2013, my actually first experience with that CFL schedule and some of the things that are unique to football outside of Canada was a long week. So we went, we went from, you know, from like a Friday to like the following Sunday night or something like that. And it was, it was, that was also strange because it's really, you come out of, these guys come out of an NCAA and it's all Saturdays or some guys may bounce into NFL camps and stuff and you get, uh, you know, mo mostly Saturday, uh, Sunday schedule. And so it is very strange. And then the flip side of that, what we have this week in the, the short week, I mean, it just doesn't even, it feels like, uh, like this is what, you know, basketball and hockey and like, this is not really a football thing. And it's even more so that because it's the same team twice, that's also sort of unique, certainly to college football. That's you get a, you play a team once a year and, and, you know, you're not going to see them until next season. Right. And very different up here. Um, I love the mental prep of a short week like this. So all you have to do, you're not, at least for me, I was just watching this game. The game, like if it's if I'm a tie cat right now, I'm watching the Labor Day Classic on, and for film on my iPad, and that's it. I'm watching my own routes. I'm watching to see the coverages develop, and we're talking about some things they may change or may not. And it's very easy mentally. Physically, it just comes down to what happened to you personally in that game. <laughs> because if you if you lucked out kind of, and you you're now you're always sore after a game because you even if you just even if you didn't get touched you, you ran a lot you know so you're yeah. always uh you're always sore you always got to stretch you're always feeling that but it depends did you take any hits did, did like did anything a little bit uncomfortable happen the quarterbacks are going to have that one sack that didn't feel quite right um and, and everybody's got that strange thing that happened and that's the, that's what's still bothering you Every now and again, you lucked out with a game and you got to the next day and you're like, you know what, I, I didn't, I'm actually pretty okay right now. So good for those guys. But for the most part, for the most part, physically, it, it is a little tough to make this turnaround. And the coaches are, I think, more than understanding uh, when it comes to that and the practice schedule. Awesome job, Luke. Looking forward to Friday and uh, standing beside you, calling the game against the Argonauts. And we'll see if the Tiger Cats can keep this thing going. Can't wait, RJ. It's going to be a great matchup and hard to win against the same team twice in a row. But uh, the Ticats are sort of firing on all cylinders. So we'll see. It's going to be an exciting matchup at BMO Field. All right. Kickoffs at 730 Eastern time on Ticats Audio Network. An hour before that at 630 Eastern time, it's Ticats pregame with Louis B and Andy Fantuz. So they'll get you set up and then Luke and I will take you through the game. Hope to have you listening on Friday.